Well, the world's still nuts, and we're still teaching the Bible. <laughs> I have to say, though, I never, I never saw a tenth of this coming. I mean, you know, when Paul said there'll be terrible times in the last days, tell you never, when Paul said there'll be terrible times in the last days, he was not fooling. It's amazing to me. Hallelujah. 1988, June of 1988, first time we heard Fred Price, he said in that message, he said, you know, I don't feel like I was made for this world. And uh, when you walk with God and you read his word and you pray and you get answers, you're not at home here. You're a pilgrim passing through. Amen. And uh, because of what I'm dealing with tonight and headed into uh, Sunday morning, I want to encourage everybody to stay focused because at the end of the day, what matters is your life and your family and what's going on with you because there's a whole lot going on we can't fix, you know? Satan's having his way. Like Shakespeare said, hell is empty and all the devils are here. <laughs> Amen? But we can't do anything about all that. We can get all worked up about it. We have to focus on our lives and our families and uh, believe God. I believe that these are the days for racking up testimonies. That's what I believe. If you have a Bible, we're going to be in John 8 for a minute. If you study John's gospel, especially chapters 5 and 8, you will see Jesus constantly referring to who he was. This was Jesus testifying or confessing who he was. So what we're saying tonight is that Jesus is our example of confessing who we are. John chapter 8, verse 12 is just one example. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. See, what's he doing? We, we read this because it's gospel. We read this because this is Jesus, but we don't stop and ask ourselves, what is he doing? He's confessing who he was. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The Pharisees challenged him. Uh, we're headed into the Holy Week Revival beginning Sunday morning. That'll be Sunday morning at 9 and 11, Sunday evening at 6, then Monday through Friday at 7. And I don't mean to be dramatic, but literally I was in the middle of studying for that in February and I texted, I was with Sue, but I texted Austin and Christina. I said, you know, I believe I, I came out of the womb to teach this. It's just fundamental and critical. And I'll tell you something else too. As much as I've heard teaching on confession, when I go back and study confession, I think, oh my gosh, I need more help in this. I need more discipline in this. Because at the end of the day, our mouths snare us. Amen? But look at what happened in verse 13. The Pharisees challenged him. When you begin saying who you are in Christ, Satan will challenge you. When you begin confessing where you are in Christ, Satan will challenge you. When you begin confessing what you possess in Christ, Satan will challenge you. When you begin confessing what you can do in Christ, Satan will challenge you. The Pharisees challenged him. Here you are appearing as your own witness. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, and I wanted to zero in on verse 14. Even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid, for I know where I came from and where I'm going. But you have no idea where I came, where I come from or where I'm going. Verse 15, you judge by human standards. I pass judgment on no one, but if I do, my decisions are right because I am not alone. Say it out loud, I am not alone. Not Say alone. it again, I am not alone. I am not alone. I stand with the Father who sent me. In your own law, it is written that the testimony of two is valid. I am one who testifies for myself. My other witness is the Father who sent me. 
All right. So we're talking about confession. We're talking about how Jesus is the model of confession. Someone might protest and say, man, that was Jesus. We can't talk like that. Oh, really? Look again at verse 18. I am one who testifies for myself. My other witness is the Father who sent me. When we confess God's word, our other witness is God. I said, when we confess God's word, our other witness is God. When we say about ourselves what God says about us, our other witness is God. When we say about ourselves what God says about us, our other witness is God. Now, what do verses 15 and 16 mean? You mean you judge by human standards, I pass judgment on no one. But if I do judge, my decisions are right because I'm not alone. I stand with the Father who sent me. You know, I remember once, I probably shouldn't tell this. I remember once Austin disagreed with me on something. And uh, uh, I told him, I said, well, I said, you just, you just go to prayer tomorrow morning and you ask Father God about that and you tell me what he says. See, we can come to a place where we know. But that place is when our decisions and our judgments are based on the word of God. Do you understand? He got over that quick because apparently uh, the Lord agreed with me. <laughs> Actually, the Lord didn't agree with me. I had agreed with the Lord. Amen. So that's where I'm headed with this. The world, see, Jesus said, verse 15, you judge by human standards. And look at this. This is Jesus. He said, I pass judgment on no one. See, right now in American society, they, they want everybody to believe that evangelical churches, we're passing judgment on this and we're passing judgment on that. We're not judging anything. We're not judging anything. We are not judging anything. However, we stand in agreement with the one who has already passed judgment. Can you see the difference? We're not judging, but we stand in agreement, I do, with the one who has already judged. He's already judged. It's already been decided. Long ago. Do you understand? And with Father God, it's not a moving target. I don't know about you, but I can't keep up. I mean, literally, I can't keep up because the so-called new moral standards are changing by the minute. The world judges by human standards. We pass judgment on no one, and the reason we pass no one, the reason we pass judgment on no one is because like Jesus, the Father has already passed judgment on men's behavior. It's already been decided. So when we maintain a biblical perspective, we stand with the Father, and the Father has already passed judgment. He's already decided. Some things never occurred to him. <laughs> I don't want to go down that path because that, that would be quite a rabbit hole for a Wednesday night. But... Uh, When you go to seminary and you study Greek philosophy, you, you realize that a lot of what passes for theology is not theology. A lot, theology, etymologically, theology, the word theology means a word about God. You realize that a lot of theology isn't theology, it's Greek philosophy. For example, the omniscience of God. God knows everything. Finest Jennings Dake, that was one of the first things he taught me. I was 18 or 19 years old. He said, God knows everything that is knowable. And I had to get my mind around that. He knows everything that is knowable. Did he know what color shoes you were going to put on tonight? See, and, and these are concepts that we have no biblical basis for, but they come out of Greek philosophy. Let me give you an example. Right now I'm in Ezekiel, my annual Bible reading, and over and over and over in Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, and Ezekiel, God says repeatedly through various witnesses, 
He said, you sacrificed your, he said, you sacrificed my children. God calls them my children. You sacrificed my children in the fires of Molech, something I, I never commanded and did not enter my mind. And it's got me thinking about 2021 America that they're inventing CRAP right now that God, ne it never entered God's mind. You understand? I mean, they are inventing wickedness. The whole idea uh, of giving children drugs to stop puberty. And are, are, do we, are, are we to believe that God saw this coming 6,000 years ago? I think he might have passed on Adam. No. I'm saying they're inventing new ways to be wicked. So, God, God has already passed judgment. I got off track there. The point is, we're not judging anything. But we stand with the one who has already judged. I just read the other night, and because I'm moving quickly, I'm not sure if it's in Ezekiel. It might have been in, uh, I think it was in Jeremiah. God, the prophet said, can, can a, a man bear a child? See, in other words, these, these things that 2021 America is supposedly dealing with, these, these questions have been decided long, long, long time back. Right. Amen. Amen. I can't, a man cannot menstruate. A man cannot bear a baby. Amen. Uh, And, and of, of course, I'm a smart guy, so I, I tend to avoid these issues because I'm not trying to twist the nose and make somebody's nose bleed, you know, online. But the fact of the matter is, we stand with God. Yes. Amen. And this is all going to come out in the wash. But the problem is, when it all comes out in the wash, heaven or hell will be decided for each individual person. And there'll be no way back. Now, our country is making these crazy extreme decisions, but while the country is making these crazy extreme decisions, I see God's people making decisions that are wrecking them every week. And they're making decisions that wreck them every week, and the decisions they're making are contrary to the written Word of God. And people just don't take the time to find out in advance what does God's word say about what I'm about to do. Now, a lot of people here came to us after your life was all messed up. I understand that. But what we can do is stop making bad decisions. And even if we messed ourselves up, if we're good and godly people, we should want our children taught the Word of God so they don't repeat what we did. Does that make sense? But while I'm on the, the topic of sin and judgment and law, God never gave man a law for God's good. All the laws of God are for our good. God wants you to be healthy. God wants you to be wealthy. God wants you to have... Uh, God wants you to be productive, both economically and in your family. God wants you to be blessed in everything you put your hand to. And But we know, we know, we know. Uh, something came up the other day, and I asked my family, I said, name one good thing that came out, ever came out of alcohol. Yeah, but you know, Pastor, I, you know, now you're on my turf. Well... Name one good thing that ever came out of it. Name one good thing that ever came out of marijuana. Name one good thing ever came out of heroin. Name one good thing that ever came out of whatever you want to bring up. See, in other words, you look around and you see damage, 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 damage. And uh, we understand that among lost folk, but we don't understand it among God's people. It's unnecessary. It's unnecessary. 
It's one thing, look, it rarely happens at Faith Christian Center, but, but occasionally at Faith Christian Center, somebody's going down the road minding their own business and they are really attacked by, by something, a disease, or they're really attacked by something out of the blue. It's rare at Faith Christian Center, but it can happen. It, it has happened. We understand that. We'll pray. We'll fast. We'll believe God. We'll stand with our brothers and sisters. So there, but there's no point in self-inflicting wounds. Do you understand? There's no point in going down a road when I can look around and see that no good ever came out of that. Or experimenting with human beings. That's what they're doing right now. That's what, that's what the COVID thing is. It's the, greatest, it's the greatest social experiment in the history of humanity. Let's, let's, let's do two weeks, see if they'll go for that. Okay, well, let's do a month, see if they'll go for that. Okay, well, uh, you gotta, you gotta, now you got to mask up. Okay, well, until we get the vaccine. Okay, okay, well, then, now you got to wear two masks. Now, now you got to stay six foot apart. They're just seeing how dumb everybody is. And I think they have their answer. Uh, even if you have your vaccine, now you, you still got to wear two masks. This, this, is, this is what happens when mankind, humankind, rejects Christ and rejects the Bible. They will literally believe anything. They'll believe anything. And we're not talking about Ebola. We're talking about something with a 99.8% survival rate. And, and I don't mean to bring that up all the time, but it's, it's an obvious example right in front of us. See, once you... I sat in a little country Assembly of God church when I was in high school, and the guest speaker said that most everybody there that night would live to see same-sex marriages. And I'm a teenager, and, you know, after church, we would typically go get hamburgers or whatever. And I mean, I'm a teenager, and I've been a Christian since I was five years old. But I told everybody there, the, the other teenagers, they're getting burgers. I said, man, he's crazy. He's crazy. That'll never happen. Well, we're about 14 light years past that. Do you understand? So once people reject the Word of God, and, and this is what's happened in these churches, that's what's happened in these churches. They reject the Bible for, this, for the sake of success. They reject the Bible for the sake of numbers. They reject the Bible for the sake of money. You understand, I'm a smart guy. I'm totally aware that I could compromise and I could have a bigger crowd. I know it. I just don't care. You know, I could get some spiky hair. I, I could get some stretch jeans. I could, uh, you know, suit a dress like a 17-year-old hooker. And, uh, you know, I could compromise the Word of God. And I could give you pop psychology. I, 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 I get it. I'm a smart guy. I get it. I'd have a bit more numbers. I'd have a bigger crowd. I'd have more money. But I'm not going to hell for success. That just seems to me to be the dumbest thing. Uh, uh, and I understand a rapper doing that or whoever, an entertainer, but people that are supposed to be men and women of God? See, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. So the reason we don't judge things is because it's already been judged. So when we maintain a biblical perspective, we stand with the Father, and the Father's already passed judgment. <laughs> He's already passed judgment. And so just like Jesus, we judge no one, but we know what God has said, and we stand with God. We know what God has said, and we stand with God's Word. It is God who has done the judging. It's God who has done the judging. You judge by human standards, verse 15, I pass judgment on no one, 
I mean, this is the Son of God. How could he possibly utter these words? I pass judgment on no one. Well, because his father had already passed judgment. I pass judgment on no one, but if I do judge, my decisions are right because I'm not alone. I stand with the Father who sent me. And there are times, it's not often, but there are times, you know, I'm called upon to make a judgment, and I know that, that uh, my judgment is correct. God will stand with me. And on the flip side of that coin, there have been times in my life where I was wrong, and I have to go back and confess it and ask forgiveness because I'm a human being and I can miss it. Say it out loud. I'm a human being, I'm a human being. and I can miss it. Can miss it. Amen. Jesus' bold and continual confession of who he was in the Father is our example. We are what he made us to be. And this is why God's people scratch and claw and do without. Because they, they've never come to see who they are. They've never come to believe what the Word of God says they are. They've never come to confess who they are. They've never come to act like what the Word of God says they are. We're not what Satan says we are. We're not what relatives say we are. We're not what this whole world says we are. <laughs> we, how in the world is my iPhone ringing when I don't have a phone in my iPhone, iPad? I hate all of it. <laughs> you know, my phone says where my car is parked. I, I tell Austin, please turn that off. I, I don't want my phone to know where my car is parked. <laughs> we had a young man was in Cincinnati, and he went to the corner because I've told the story. I sat there. At, there was a burger joint at Beachmont and Salem Avenues, and I went with my father to lunch at this hamburger joint. I told him, I'm not going back to Miami University. I'm called. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I've submitted to the call. I'm going to preach God's gospel. I'm going to Central Bible College. And he prophesied over my life. He said, you'll never be anybody. You'll never have anything. You'll never go anywhere. You'll be poor all the days of your life. But I'm not what people say I am. I'm not what the world says I am. I'm not even what my natural father said I am. I'm who God says I am. And that's a bridge we have to cross. There are, that Sunday, was it about three Sundays back, I talked about the family of God and how that when you come into the family of God, it's your opportunity to have a new set of parents. People came to me weeping because of the baggage their moms and dads had put on them and because of the load and the burden they had carried through life. No. And, and that's why we can't get too worked up when the world calls us names. We're not who the world says we are. We're not who relatives say we are. We're not who Satan says we are. We are, we are who God says we are, and we are what God says we are. Say it out loud. I am who God says I am. Say it again, I am who God says I am. Now, that's not all there is to it. We have to take corresponding action and act like we are what God says we are. The Spirit keeps bringing a phrase to me over and over and over in these COVID days. A sanctified life. Are you really living a sanctified life? See, we, we want to... Maybe, we, we've, maybe you've heard me teach. Last, I looked it up. Last time I taught it was 2002. Four things we must confess. So I can say who I am in Christ. I can say where I am in Christ. I can say what I possess in Christ. I can say what I can do in Christ. But now if I go out here and uh, smoke marijuana and drink beer and cuss at my wife, it's not going to work. See, I got to live a sanctified life if I want that word to work for me. Jesus confessed what he was and who he was, but sense knowledge could not understand it. Now, I'm getting to it, and this is important. Tell your neighbor, this is important. <laughs> Jesus confessed what he was and who he was, but sense knowledge could not understand it. We are to confess who we are in Christ, where we are in Christ, what we possess in Christ, and what we can do in Christ. And just like back in Jesus' day, today, men dominated by sense knowledge will not understand us. Unsaved people 
will not understand us, and even carnal Christians will not understand us. 1 Corinthians 2.14, the man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. I like the King James, but the natural man, the carnal man, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. And I like that phrasing, receiveth not. It's active. It's an act of rejection. To confess that you are redeemed, that your redemption is an actual reality, that you are delivered out of Satan's dominion and authority, is a daring confession to make. To confess that you are an actual new creation created in Christ Jesus. Everybody say out loud, in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. That you are now a partaker of the very nature and life of God would amaze your friends. Confessing who you are in Christ Jesus isn't confessing at once, but daily affirming your relationship to him, daily confessing your righteousness, daily confessing your ability to stand in his presence without the sense of guilt or inferiority. And that's what changes your perspective of yourself. I sat in T.L. Osborne's living room one day and he said, you know, he said, people think we spend our lives trying to get them to believe God. He said, anybody can believe God. He said, we spend our lives trying to get people to believe in themselves. We spend our lives trying to get people to believe in, in themselves. I won't mention who it was, but uh, Lester Summerall told me how amazed he was, one of the most famous ministers in America. flew on a private jet with a friend of his from Los Angeles to South Bend, Indiana to have Lester Summerall cast a demon out of this famous minister's friend. And Lester Summerall, that's the kind of relationship I had with him. He, he told Sue and I, he told us a story, who it was, and he said, you know what's amazing to me? He said, any believer in the Lord Jesus Christ can cast a demon out of somebody. But he said, here is this minister of the gospel and famous at that. And they had so little confidence in their own ability. They fly a private jet from Los Angeles, California to South Bend, Indiana for me to cast a devil out of somebody. So it's not just you or me here tonight that maybe has identity issues. Because, see, these things have not been taught. And the problem with it is, frankly, when you, when you begin studying this stuff and you begin saying who you are in Christ, just like those Pharisees accosted Jesus verbally, people are going to accost you. It's going to cause issues. And it's going to cause issues with friends. Actually, what it's going to do is it's going to cut down on your friends. Amen. So dare to stand in the presence of sense knowledge facts and dare to declare that you are what God says you are. I'm headed somewhere with this. For instance, sense knowledge might say that I'm sick. I confess that God laid that disease or sickness or pain on Jesus and that Satan has no right to put that on me. I confess that by his stripes I am healed. I am to hold fast my confession in the face of apparent sense knowledge contradiction. Now we're going to get into this Sunday through Friday. I was helping Austin with a project at his house and doing things that, you know, I shouldn't have been doing. And uh, I woke up the next day and I'm telling you, I mean, I had some serious and alarming pain. And because of where it was, I knew that if, if I had ventured off to a doctor, I knew what they'd tell me. You know, they want to, you know, and people don't understand this about doctors. They, they, they need to make money to pay for their second home and their yacht and all that. So, uh, so you know, I told Sue, I said, I said, this is what it is. This is where it is. And of course, she knows I'm not going to see anybody. And so I just go to confessing. That's my solution to everything. And uh, 
It was some doggone pain, I'm telling you. And it took four or five days, which is slow for me. But I confessed it right out. See, it's a matter of you renewing your mind to where you have confidence. And we're going to deal with this next week, but To, to be grateful to God and to thank God for the test. We don't, that's not our nature. That's sure not my nature. But a test is another opportunity to get an A. A test is an opportunity to prove one more time, and that's what 2021 is about. If you haven't figured it out, that's why we're still here. A test is an opportunity to prove one more time that the Word of God is so and the devil is a liar. That's what a test is. And so I've learned in my life to stop, to, to not complain and to thank God for the test, which is completely not my nature, and to declare who I am in Christ Jesus. And like I said, that last thing I went through, it took four, four maybe five days. And I mean, I'm telling you, it was rugged. It was rugged. Because it, it was hindering me and walking and praying. I mean, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, man, when you walk four miles and every step of it's painful, it gets your attention. But I just plowed through it. I just said who I was. I just said what God said. I was putting some photocopier paper away and I came across a, a sleeve of CDs. And I thought, oh my gosh, is that where they are? Because now we don't use CDs. And it was the 55 parts of Fred Price, his original series, not the one he redid, but the original series on the power of positive confession. And I was reminiscing on that. that that's what I put, of course, but that, the CDs were made later. Before that, I had the cassette tapes. And that's what I put in that, that first BMW I ever owned, 1989. I bought a 1988 one-year-old BMW, and I'm listening to Fred Price on, on confession. And I'm telling you, people reacted. When you, start, when you start letting the Word of God come out of your mouth, because, see, people are in the realm of sense knowledge. People are operating in the realm of sense knowledge. They're not operating in the realm of revelation knowledge. Even, even Christians generally are operating in the realm of sense knowledge. They're not operating in the realm of revelation knowledge. See, as a new creation in Christ, let me back up. Sense knowledge says, see, I say, I'm, I say what the Word of God says, and the Word of God says that with His stripes I have been healed. Sense knowledge says that is not true. Your mind, your will, your emotions, your senses, what you can see, taste, touch, hear, smell, says you're lying. The pain says you're lying. The symptoms say you're lying. Sense knowledge says it's not true that I'm confessing an untruth, a lie. But I'm confessing what God says, and how can I tell a lie if I say what God says? You see, there are two kinds of truth, sense knowledge truth and revelation truth, and they are usually opposed to each other. As a new creation in Christ, I live in a new realm above the senses. This is good stuff. As a new creation in Christ, I live in a new realm above the senses. So I hold fast to my confession that I am what the Word says I am. I live in a new realm above the senses. And so I hold fast to my confession that I am what the Word says I am. This is how Faith Christian Center's donated income rose 51% in 2020 in the year of the corona. This is how we were able to pay off Faith Christian Center in 2020 in the year of the corona. This is how we were able to pay off Faith Christian Center in 2020 in the year of the corona and not take a nickel from the government. I don't think, I don't think even our people understand what an incredible miracle this was. We took God's word and we opened our mouths and we dared to confess God's word and we took action on God's word. And we acted like God's word was so, and we walked above the circumstances in 2020 and the year of the corona. 
Now, looking around the room here tonight, let me say that I salute you and I commend you, but I don't think you even have comprehended how strong you are. Because this world out here is running around like a bunch of little old scared chickens. But, but you don't look like a bunch of scared chickens tonight. Do you understand? Shout it out loud. I'm strong in the Lord, I'm strong in the Lord. and in the power of his might. See, we took God's word and we opened our mouths and we dared to confess God's word and we took action on God's word and we acted like God's word was so and we walked above the circumstances in 2020. We walked above it. Can you see it? We walked above it. That's why Fred said in June of 1988 that he, he didn't feel at home in this world. We don't feel at home in this world because things that frighten others, they don't, it doesn't frighten us. We know who we are. We know who we are in Christ. We have authority. Amen. Amen. We do not walk on this planet like other men do. But the problem is we have never ventured out. I, I don't want to try that out, so I didn't do that. Now, the time may come. You may, you may be surprised because I've just about had it to my fullness with some behavior. But we don't venture to see what God will do. And I'll tell you how we did it in 2020 because the coronavirus mess got us to focus. See, I think as a congregation, we weren't focused. Now, what we were kind of forced to do in 2020, I don't know about you, but I'm doing by choice in 2021. I'm just focused. God is my source. Say it out loud. God is my source. I have seed in the ground. Say it. I got seed in the ground. So I know Luke 638, I got a miracle on the way. See, in other words, we didn't have a choice last year because our backs, I mean, it wasn't that our backs were to the wall, but we were, we were pressed, you know, socially, financially, governmentally. I mean, we were pressed on all sides. We focused. But what we did of necessity last year, we can do by choice this year. In fact, we can do by choice from now to where we cross over. So we took God's word and we opened our mouths and we dared to confess God's word and we took action on God's word and we acted like God's word was so and we walked above the circumstances. And that's what I'm preaching. I'm preaching walking above the circumstances. You know, a lot of what's going on is not real. Our CPA was here yesterday and he told us, this is horrible stuff. He told us that when they did those loans, those PPP loans, they told everybody that the money you spent to keep your business running would be tax deductible. Then he said, we got to June and the IRS said, no, that the monies you got on your PPP loans will not be tax deductible. And then he said, by the time they got to the end of the year, December, they reversed course again. And they said, well, the... The, if you use that money to cover your expenses to keep your business going, it will be tax deductible. But here's the sad thing. He told us that every client of theirs, every business that they handle and represent that closed their doors from June to December last year, closed their doors, went under, went bankrupt because they couldn't see any way to pay their taxes on because now their write-offs had disappeared. See, you cannot, my point is, the world doesn't know what the H-E-L-L -L they're doing. So you cannot make your decisions in life based on what they're doing because they don't know from one minute to the next whether they're male or female. And, and I mean, this is despicable. We have an acquaintance. He's not a friend. We have an acquaintance and he has, he had 
uh, a franchise restaurant. It was one of our favorite places to go. It was kind of like a nostalgia trip, and, and we liked to go there. And he had kids in college. Man, he got wiped out. He got wiped out. That's permanently closed. He got wiped out. His life savings gone, his dreams, his visions gone. Uh, what's happened to his kids in college? Because they say, here's this money. You'll be able to write off your expenses. Oops, no, you can't write off your expenses. Oops, we were wrong. You can write off your expenses. And, and the business is gone. It's gone. It's gone. You cannot live your life based on what this world is doing or saying or preaching or believing because they're confused and they don't know from one minute to the next what they believe. And you know as well as I do, anytime anybody has ever brought us a bad report from a doctor in all of these years, you know the first thing we're going to tell people is go get a second opinion because a lot of times you go get a second, you don't even need a miracle. A lot of times you don't need a miracle, you just need a second opinion. Because a lot of times even the doctors don't know what they're doing. And the one good thing about COVID is now at least they're not cutting off the wrong legs anymore. You know, you, you, would, you couldn't hardly go a month without reading an article about somebody had diabetes and they go into the hospital to get the left leg cut off. And, Oop, we cut off the wrong one. Uh, now we got to cut off the other one. I mean, that'd be a bad day. So I just choose to go by what God has said. Now, I mean, we got to take care of ourselves. You know, we got to go to the dentist. We got to take care of ourselves. But I don't believe everything. The world is lost. Actually, it's worse than that. The world's nuts. They have gone beyond being worldly. Now they've gone to crazy. And we can't take their word on anything. Thank God, thank God, thank God. We didn't take any of that money. Suppose my senses reveal the fact that I'm in great need financially. The word of God declares my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So I put God in remembrance of his word. I put God in remembrance that he is my source. I refuse to be intimidated by the sense evidences. And there it is. Say it out loud. I got to refuse to be intimidated by the sense evidences. I, ha I refuse to have my life governed by sense evidences. I know that greater is he that is in me than the forces that surround me. 1 John 4, 4, year of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I know that the forces that oppose me are in the sense realm. I know that the, that I know the power that is in me. It is the Holy Spirit. And I know that spiritual forces are greater than the forces in the sense realm. So I maintain my confession of God's word, of spiritual reality, spiritual truth in the face of sense contradictions. I just hold my ground. I don't yield. I say what God has said about my life. Now, the problem is, and I realize this, that you see me in 2021. Sue says, my problem is I make it look easy. But you have to understand that when when I got those 55 Fred Price messages on the power of a positive confession, we, did, we didn't have any cushion. We had no reserves. Uh, I had people that knew a little bit more about the church than others. And I started standing up and doing offerings. You know, uh, all of our needs are met. All of our bills are paid. And people would chastise me and say, you know, you're, you're, you're lying. Well, I would say, how can I, how can I be lying if I'm saying what God says? Amen. And then you have no idea. You sit here, you have no idea. You have no idea. I mean, there were days back at I-30, I know this was true. There were meltdown days right here. There were meltdown days right here. And I stood up. I never changed my vocabulary. I said the same thing. All of our needs are met. We're being made rich. And we were going backwards, backwards, backwards. 
Cash was going down, down, down. I mean, we were cutting, cutting, cutting. Those were not happy days. That's part of the reason, it reason why it took 14 years to get this 20-year note paid off was some of, those, some of those 14 years were meltdown years. I know, I know what I'm talking about. You just got to stand your ground. See, if you knuckle under, your defeat is assured. If you submit to sense knowledge, your defeat is assured. But if you'll stand with God, at least you have an opportunity of surviving. At least you have an opportunity of having a testimony. See, now we're on the other side of all of that. Now we're on the other side of all of that. Now we have no debt. Now we have plenty of reserves. We're on the other side of all of that. But what I'm saying is we didn't get there in a week. We didn't get there in a month. We didn't get there. We didn't even get there in a decade. It takes time. But if we'll stay with it, if we'll stay with it, if we'll stay with the word of God, if we'll say what God says, if we'll believe what God says, believe the good report, not believe the evil report. Amen. And I'm going to close with this since I went down a couple of different moral paths. This is what's happening in our society. We've got political leaders and Christian leaders and they're, they're yielding to the culture. They're yielding to the, well, the culture's gone this way, so what can I do about it? So, you know, I, I got I to gotta yield because that's what sense knowledge is doing. And I think now, I said in the uh, power lunch, I'm, I'm greatly alarmed because in the power, parable of the sower, the, the master said to the workers, they turn out in the parable to be the angels to go and collect the weeds before you collect the wheat. And I am greatly alarmed because when I see people that are supposed to be born again knuckling under to all of this moral insanity, I think they're disqualifying themselves for the rapture because they, they stood with man. Actually, they stood with Satan. And you remember what Jesus said, Pastor, how can you believe this? Because Jesus said, if anyone is ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him, them when he comes in his, Father's glory, in his Father's glory with his holy angels. And Jesus called that generation 2,000 years ago an adulterous and sinful generation. What would he call this one? I have no idea. You know, I saw a video just the other day in a, in a kindergarten. A, a transgender person was asking kindergartners, uh, do you know how to twerk? This is how you twerk. It's unbelievable what they're doing to the children of America. It's unbelievable what they're doing. Planned Parenthood, it, the, the new cash cow is prescribing drugs to keep children from going through puberty. So this, this whole thing, this whole agenda, it, it's about money. It's about money. And they make money uh, killing them in the womb. And if they escape that, well, then they make money uh, prescribing drugs so that uh, they're confused all the days of their lives. So a minister of the gospel is going to go along with this? A, a politician who says they're a Christian and is born again is going to go along with this? No. No, this is a weeding out process. It's a weeding out process. I believe it. And I believe that on the flip side, on the positive side, that's why God did such a mighty miracle among us last year because uh, we're living in Malachi 3.18 days. You will again see the distinction between those who serve God and those who do not. And there's not just a, different, a distinction between those who believe and those who don't believe. There's a distinction between those who uh, practice the Word of God and those who do not practice the Word of God. There's a distinction between those who take action on the Word of God and those who do not take action on the Word of God. These are the days. But I wake up every day of my life and I'm horrified at what Satan has done to man, what man actually, the, more appropriately, what man has allowed Satan to do to man. And it's on my mind every day of my life. If it is this messed up, 
before the rapture of the church, what is it going to be like 30 days after God takes his people out of here? I don't know, but I don't want to be here. Amen? Amen. Tell your neighbor, I want to go on the first load. I want to go on the first load. <laughs> Hallelujah.